the, and these are what we call symbols. There's a slide coming up in a moment. But once we work out what our values and behaviours are, we symbolise them. Okay, so a symbol could be the scores downstairs. If this is a high performance centre, okay, the scores, the benchmarks, okay, who is lifting the most on their bench press, who has the best big test, who has the best 40 metre spread bench press, they're all scores that are written up downstairs. Okay. So you'll see them expressed in terms of symbols. What might be a symbol, for example, of trust? So a symbol is something which is seeable, it's tangible, it's touchable, you can feel it. One of our teams that we look after overseas, we're working with them, they're a baseball team, Division One College, there's 45 athletes in the baseball team at the start of the season. There's a new coach, previous coaching regime, uh, didn't, didn't work out so well, so they were given the sack. Uh, a new coach has come in who really gets on board with a lot of this stuff. First thing he did, remove the symbols of the old regime. So, if you have symbols which express the type of culture that you don't want, what do you have to do? You've got to get rid of them. And for him, it was the sponsor. So he wanted to remove any association with the previous sponsor. So they got rid of Nike, they brought in New Balance. They have their hats, written on the side of their hat is, above the New Balance logo is RD. RD stands for Relentless Development. What behaviours do you associate with that? They have a whole list of behaviours which they associate with a relentless development attitude. Does that make sense? So as well as symbolising what you do want to see, you've got to remove symbols of the old culture that you don't want. Okay? So yeah, this, this can be really common. This is actually really easy. Okay, once you think about it like this. Okay, and I can I can look around out here and I can see some symbols that you might question. And there's some symbols which are really, really positive. <coughs> okay. Everything will be symbolized in some way. And uh, sometimes the symbols could be, as, uh, as I said before, if you have a star player on the team uh, treating another player poorly, the coach doesn't do anything about it. That's symbolic of? Disrespect. Disrespect. Yeah. Or it could be symbolic of, if you're a great player, you don't have to abide by the values and behaviours that we set for everyone else. So one rule for you, one rule for everyone else. It never works. Okay. Okay. So, last part about behaviours is if you thought about this in your teams, are there behaviours that okay, you express in terms of what we call above the line behaviours? And then what we have as below the line behaviours. So for example, if we take respect as an above the line What's the value? Okay, we have respect for each other. Some behaviours that you might associate with respect. It could be something as simple as when you turn up to train, say hello to everyone. And not just the people on your teams, but all of the support staff, because in rugby league, what I've noticed about even the most professional teams, there's still stacks of volunteers. You know, there's guys that carry out the water bottles, the drinks, there's some old guys that hang around just because they love the sport, they're passionate about it. If you respect everyone on the team, all the players say hello to those guys, they have a chat to them, and they treat them like they're part of the team. Okay? So they say hello, what might be some other examples of respect? Could be, as we said before, punctual. Okay, and let's just say that they might be dressed in team gear. And not sloppily dressed either but really respecting their team's jersey and the sponsors. Okay, now what might be some below the line behaviours? We could just say all of the opposite, right? Okay, let's just keep it simple. All of the opposite. Now what happens is, this looks like, it works a little bit like an equation. Okay, so we add this one up, we add this one up, we add this one up. Hopefully it equals a big number. Okay, if we were to add them up. Now, every time you do a below the line behaviour, what does it do to the above the line behaviours? Reduces them. And it's no different from what Mal was talking about before when he spoke about the Origin team and all the, the phenomenally great things that those guys do and how strong their culture actually is. There were two players in 2009 that didn't. Didn't respect and abide by the culture that that team had set. What did it do to the result? 
Okay, suddenly they get beaten and they, they cop a hammering in the press because it's a public view. Okay, so that number can end up being negative. And that's when you get beaten. That's a major contributing factor. Okay.